TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show, and uh, this is going to be a leet show today. Right. All right, so, a little history about this wine. Was uh, just surfing the net, and I believe I just was throwing in um, search terms, 1337 and wine and all that, and what pops up? But a picture of the label of this wine uh, talking about being leet. Now, on first look, and you know, I know you can't really see the label very much, you'd go, I don't get why it would be. Uh, and even if I put the label closer to the camera, you probably won't be able to tell what it is. So, to remind myself to do this, we're going to take a picture of the label, and hopefully it'll come out. If not, well then, <clears throat> too bad, so sad. But we'll do one more picture because I don't think that other one came out very well. Okay, so, what are we drinking? It is the 2005 Chateau Petit Pouche, or Pooh, or Pooh, Puck, or Pooch, I don't know. You tell me what it is. Uh, 2005 Petit Pouch. Uh, and uh, it's from Bordeaux. It's from the uh, Graves de Vaires, Vier, maybe Vaires, uh, area of Bordeaux. And um, it was $21 from uh, Artesian Wines. Now, this was a wine that took me a little while to find. Um, it's not available in, your, in my usual spots. That I like to go look for, one of them being Wine Library. Um, but winesearcher.com, and I'll put the link to that below. Uh, winesearcher.com is what I had, uh, is actually how I found it. I spent about a week or two just on and off looking for it. Um, so 2005, uh, it is an 80% Merlot, 20% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon blend. And um, 2005, by the way, which 2005 was an incredible vintage for Bordeaux. So pretty much any wine that you get from there, whether it's a great wine or not, should be pretty good. This part of Bordeaux is in the Entre du Mer, uh, so that is in between, well, between the two seas. Uh, it was in between the, the left and right bank of uh, Bordeaux, and this particular winery's um, property is directly across the Dorgon River from saint Emilion and Fonsac. So let's see what it's like. Oh, it's kind of neat. The label, you can't see in the back. I don't know why I'm doing that. Is in French and English, the back label. I'm kind of waiting to give you the punchline as to why this limp wine is leaked. See if you can figure it out, just so you know. All right, so initially the, the nose is pretty neat, pretty neat, pretty nice and neat at the same time. Um, I like it. There's a, there's some nice red fruits. I'm getting a little bit of chocolate in it or on it, on the nose. It's not too hot. Um, it's a 13.5% alcohol. I don't get a lot of alcohol on the nose. Slight bit of sweetness to it. But you know, it's kind of like cherries, cherries and chocolate. So let's see how it tastes. I like this. It's pretty tasty. I like when I say it's pretty tasty. I like when I use that phrase. 
better than a not so much phrase. Um, I get again some of that some of that cherry, um, some more red fruits, not a lot of of the chocolate, but a little bit of spiciness to it. description because I think this kind of really does talk about it a little bit. Now there's two I got this from um, from the Artesian Vineyards people they sent it in the box uh, tasting notes. So I'm going to read these real quick. Um, this was from December of 08. So there's a sweet fruit nose of blackberry and dates and nutmeg. Okay. I don't get that but that's fine. Hey, that's fruitcake. That's what it said. Instead of fruitcake, give uh, a petite pouk to your friends for Christmas. They'll be much happier. This is quite extracted for Bordeaux. I'll, I'll agree with this. It's kind of extracted. Uh, there's plenty of acid and tannin to balance the palate. I don't get lots of tannin, but I do, I do get that balance. You know, I'm not getting super dry mouth out of it. The warm blackberry flavors linger long after. Uh, then the other one, the fruitcake nose of the prior tasting has started to show a nuance of chestnuts roasting over a barrel. I don't get that either. I don't get the nuttiness, but that's okay. I mean, that's a, it's a nice description. A fine silky texture in the mouth, followed by a goodly, goodly chunk of tannins. They are fairly soft, so they're not distract, they're detracting now, but do indeed promise a nice aging potential. Nice cherry fruit all the way through the finish. Oh, I got the cherry. And I did read this, but I didn't remember what it said. I, I, when I saw the fruitcake, I was like, oh yeah, they did mention fruitcake. Uh, this was from March of 09. So, um, it's a pretty good wine. Uh, it's 21 bucks. It's hard to find. Um, it is 14 euros from the website, though. Uh, you have to, I think you have to like email them to be able to order it. So, I'm not really sure how you would do that. But I'll have a link below for the... Um, website. I didn't really have a song to do. I thought the bells were kind of neat. You know, Chateau, France, all that. So, um, let's give it a rating. Uh, I like this a lot. Is it a 90 point wine? I'm not sure. It's, I'm on that borderline. I'll give it a 90. I mean, I'm kind of, I was kind of like in between 89 and 90. I'll give it a 90. I know it's gotten some good some good ratings or awards. Uh, I think it had an 80-something score from somebody. So, um, anyway, it's aged for 12 months in oak. And uh, from what I can tell, the, the translation from French to English may not have been the best. Um, they, have, they have one, two, and three-year-old oak barrels that they use for the sorry for the aging so like what it, the way they termed it said they rotated the barrel so what I'm thinking is after barrels are three years old they, they take them out of the, the, the rotation and certain percentages certain percentage of the wine is aged in one year two year three year I don't know if it's a third each but this is not an uncommon practice I know I never talked about this but it's not an uncommon practice for wines you'll see you know new French oak or you know, uh, two-year-old oak or whatever. So um, they'll they'll take one, two, three-year-old oak because after about three years, the oak doesn't really impart the flavors to it. Um, doesn't really affect the wine as much. So um, so that's what it is. Ninety points, twenty-one bucks. All right. Now, have you guys been racking your brains to why I'm calling this elite wine? Probably not, but I thought I'd, I'd make you wait. All right. So you can't see it on the label. I don't know why I did that. You still can't see it on the label. Because I don't think you can. So I'm going to go through and real quickly read the little history of this place. The Gasson records show that July 16th, 1330, the nobleman, Elie du Pouch, is granted by Edward III of England the author authorization to build a castle on his land located in Parochia Sancti, uh, Germani di Podio. So we're basically where they're at. Um, so in the parish of Saint-Germain du Pouch. Uh, problem was Ellie died, 
uh, soon after, and the royal grant was renewed to the benefit of his successor, Raymond, on June 16, 1331. You, you, hopefully you're starting to catch on where, where this is going. But it is finally Gaillard du Pouche, after a third grant in 1348, who built the fortress of Grand Pouche, close to his noble house, more ancient, uh, more ancient mansion owned by the lords of Pouche, who lived in Saint Germain since the 13th century. Ah, blah blah blah, yada yada yada. I won't go through the rest of it. Um, so, it was founded in 1337. The actual chateau it says it right there. Fonde, Fonde. On 13, I don't know how to say 1337 in French, sorry. So, it's elite wine. I had to get it. Found it in this, it, this, this chateau has been making wine for a long time. Um, or the chateau's been around for a long time. Let's put it that way. Since 1337, the, it's, uh, it's been there. And I'm proud to get some of this wine. Uh, it's good wine if you can find it. Uh, and you've got 21 bucks to um, to spend on it. I say go ahead, just for the uh, geek factor alone. Uh, get it. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up real quick. Um, hence the shirt. And you, I know you can't read it, but 1337. So I'll let you figure out what the uh, university, what this is, uh, and what the Latin phrase is. I don't know if you can read the Latin phrase or not. Uh, speaking of t-shirts. Uh, there's now swag that you can buy. Uh, Cafe Press. So if you click above and you see buy stuff, there's another. There's now another. Uh, magically, there's another link there, and it's actually a link. It doesn't go. To, it takes you to another website. It's my quote my store on Cafe Press. Um, it's really basic right now. It's just a bunch of items that just say 1337 wine on it. There's uh, hopefully I'll have some other little things in there with little catchy phrases and stuff like that. Um, it's a uh, so if you want it, buy it, and um, that's about it. Though I might switch stores just because Cafe Press costs money to do what I'm doing, and others don't cost money. I like free. Free is good. Let's see what else. Click the links. Donate. Want to be an executive producer? Come on, man. Be an executive producer. And uh, that's going to be it. Um, today I did a... well. Not really today, because I'm recording this Tuesday. But this morning, as far as this episode is concerned, I did... Oh, Lane Kiff is leaving Tennessee. What do you know? Um, uh, a Skype interview with a Portuguese winemaker. So that will be Friday's episode. I'm really psyched about that, because it will be my first international Skype interview. And um, that will be it. We'll see everybody again on Friday. Oh, Sommelier School on Thursday. That's it.